welcome to the start of another weekly vlog. So um, let's just jump into it. Yesterday, Advent Day was um, make somebody a card. So Ainsley chose to make a card for her grandma Marlene. So we made the card and we mailed it today. And then today, the Advent was um, vacuum the kitchen. So that is something she has, loves to do. And she is like just recently big enough to actually operate the vacuum on her own. And she loves it. I love it. It's a great act of kindness. And so um, that is just going so well. And I love it. We still have one outstanding, which is take somebody's um, newspaper and put it at their door. Because we have not been able to get outside early enough in the morning yet. Because it is um, currently like 55 degrees, so really nice. But it took until like 1130 to get that way. And so we haven't spent much time outside and people already have their newspaper. So hopefully this week we'll get an opportunity to take somebody's newspaper to their door. But that is what's going on Advent-wise. Um, Life-wise, nothing really new to update. Today we just kind of ran errands, did things around the house. Um, had just a kind of cold day. So as far as reading goes, I finished I Heart Forever by Lindsay Kelk. This is number seven in her I Heart series. And I have been kind of hard on this series, honestly. I have said it's kind of meh, it's kind of immature, and all of that is true. It is one of these series that follows the same protagonist from her time as a single partying gal, now she's married and um, in a career and all that kind of stuff. We have followed her for quite a while, obviously, because this is the seventh book. All of the characters are kind of over the top, a little annoying, a little immature. But now as the series is coming to an end, I'm finding that they are kind of comforting to me and that they are... Um, like I, I will be a little sad when it's over, I think, because I do like our main character, Angela, as well as, um, one of her friends, Louisa. I really don't like her friend, Jenny, and I don't like her husband at all, which I'm not going to tell you who it is because at some point there is a love triangle, not in this book, but in the storyline. And so, um, Overall, though, I gave this three and a half stars. I think it definitely deserves some comfort points when you stick with a character this long. You can't help but like kind of like them. And so I like that. Um, and I enjoyed it. This one is about, there's one thing, like my least favorite trope um, may or may not have happened in here. One of them struggles with fertility issues, either Jenny or our main character, Angela. And I truthfully can't remember which one. And um, one of them gets accidentally pregnant. I won't say which one or what happens, but I don't know if it's the one that struggled with fertility or not. So I really don't like that, but it made sense like that it could potentially happen uh, because the fertility issue was not like super extreme. So I don't know. That's just, And I'm just very sensitive to that. That is a me, me issue. So then I decided let's just finish her off and I picked up I Heart Hawaii, which is the eighth in the series. And um, this one, I Heart Forever, like between the title and some of the content, I kind of felt like this would have been a good ending to it, but she chose to leave it on a cliffhanger where um, like her job is kind of up in the air and things are really, you don't know what she's going to do and like how she's going to resolve this. So we knew this was not going to be the end. So hopefully this one will resolve everything because I think, I think it's done. I think it's done at eight, but, um, in most of these books, like I heart Hawaii, she travels different places. And so in this one, she's going to Hawaii, um, just kind of to get out of something else. And she has left her husband and child. And so it's really interesting to see her experience this and what all's going on. Um, she's with some girlfriends, some of which are in a similar life stage, some of which are not. And I'm just enjoying it. The whole cast is together in this book. And so I'm really liking that, especially as the series is coming to a close. So hopefully this will be a good ending. I'm about halfway through it. So I should finish um, at bedtime tonight. So that's everything for reading and life. Um, now Jeremy is going to go get a rental car because he is traveling tomorrow and then um, we have grocery pickup this afternoon and just kind of more stuff. So we'll see. We may do some more vacuuming. I don't even know. Crazy wild things going on in this house, but I will check in later. Uh, 
Um, today is Tuesday and we are just um, just out and about because today's advent was to donate food um, to people who are hungry and so we filled a big bag and brought it to the food um, food bank and that was a, a little bit different than it normally is because of COVID um, like you have to ring a doorbell they come to the come to the door and take your stuff and then bring it you know I mean it was kind of a detached process but still good good conversation starter so um, now we are down at the big Christmas tree that I've talked about. Our our town has a massive Christmas tree that is lit and it's got ornament. Like there's all sorts of things in this little square. So we are down here. It's supposed to be nice today. It's like gradually warming up. It's almost 11 o'clock and it's still like 45 degrees, but we're okay. We're bundled. We're going to go running and um, hang out and see the Christmas tree. So no updates on reading. I'm still in the middle of I Heart Hawaii, but I will update when I finish that. So I'm looking a little wind blown and harried, but it's because we have been outside because it is a beautiful, beautiful day. It's like currently 64 degrees in December in Kansas. It's going to be freezing literally um, by like two days from now, but I will take it. So yesterday we went and played, like I said, and it was, it was chilly um, because it's you're like kind of enclosed in this square. And so the buildings made shade on everything. And so it was breezy and chilly, but we had fun, ran around, got some energy out and got some fresh air. So thank goodness for that. Then Ainsley had to go to the bathroom and I think I've shown it in vlogs before, but it's a building that has a really, really long hallway to go to the bathroom, and Ainsley loves it. It's got, like, two offices in this building. Like, there's not very many people in it, so she just runs the hallway. And I was like, uh-huh, yep, let's do this, because I was cold. As I said, my child does not feel cold. I do. I am cold all the dang time, and it was freezing. So I was really excited to be up there and let her run the hallways, and then... um the rest of the day was just, it actually was like the best day ever. Jeremy was gone out of town and Ainsley, like at the end of the day, we always talk about what was the best part of your day. And I told her, I said, baby, you were just awesome today. You never whined. You never cried. Like it was just a completely uneventful, cooperative, wonderful, wonderful day. And so that was yesterday. And then and today is Wednesday. And we went this morning and walked. Um, I had put, like, there's, like, this buy nothing group. And I'm pretty active in it because I'm very, like, a big purger. So I like to, like, put stuff on there. And just, it's, ours is separated by, like, sectors of town. So everybody lives, like, within a couple miles of me. And so I had put some stuff on there. And then I had asked for magazines that people were done with. So um, I thought that would be a fun activity and a good way for Ainsley to, like, practice scissor skills is cut out food she wants to eat or things she wants to do or people or something. Like, she could just practice some cutting if people had things that they were done with. So somebody said yes. And they live, like, uh, like a third of a mile from me. And so I packed up the girls and it was not warm yet. It was still like 40 when we left, but we went and walked over there and then picked up the magazines and saw a bunch of different Christmas dec decor. Um, I live on a street. It's like three miles long, maybe. And it's just, uh, it's like the main, um, artery. And then there's just side street, side street, side, like it's all just residential. It's a three mile long residential street 
with um, tons of different like streets on the side. So my point is I live in a very, very residential area. However, we have been not very impressive on the Christmas light, Christmas decor front in years past. But this year, it seems like maybe because the weather's nicer or because people are home with COVID, people are like, there's a lot more decor out. So we saw some good stuff. Um, and we left the house and the trash guy was like in the neighborhood and that freaks Ainsley out, out. So she was holding my hand the entire time um, we were gone. And so I was between that and the stroller. I didn't film a whole lot, but we found some good stuff. And so that was fun. We picked up the magazines, came back. I filmed a TGI Friday and it was a good one. I'm so excited about it. And then... Um, made lunch, ate lunch, and then opened our advents for the day. And today's was um, leave a picture in a library book because I, I just think it's so fun when you see little bits like people leave bookmarks or something in it and they're personalized. I love that kind of thing. Or like buying used books, seeing the notes inside. I love that. So we colored a picture and we've got a whole stack of library books that we need to take back. So we are going to do that and hopefully make somebody a little bit happier. I don't know. I don't know if I've said it either, but when we put smiley faces in mailboxes, we only did like eight maybe. I don't know. We we did like our side of the street only because we ran out of smiley faces and it was cold. Like we were just trying to get it done or I was just trying to get it done. So um, we have gotten three letters back and it's so exciting and such a fun way to like get to know our neighbors because we just haven't really, like with COVID, we have one across the street that we talk to because they have kids and so they're outside a lot, but otherwise, like, we just don't really know our neighbors, and so they have been sending her cards, and it's just so sweet. I am loving, like, this Advent time. After the first, like, day or two, I was like, uh, maybe this is going to be more work <laughs> than the lesson is worth, but I think this lesson is invaluable, and we're actually both having a lot of fun with it. And on our way back from picking up the magazines, um, we found somebody's newspaper that was on their driveway. And if you guys remember, one of the things was um, take somebody's newspaper to their door for them. And so we were able to do that. We haven't been able to find that yet. So we found that, got that done. Now the only one outstanding is to vacuum the kitchen. And we just haven't really had time for that. So um, she's going to do that at some point to help us out and to be a good, good um help helper and housemate and so hopefully uh I mean is too too young to start like vacuuming and chores like that I don't think so so um that's really been everything life-wise now my mom just um called me and said she has something for me but she has to see me to like give it to me she can't just leave it or anything like that so she's gonna come by I have no idea what it is I'm a little nervous and I think she said she has to explain it and so I don't know. We'll see. My mother, um, gifting, like gifts are her love language. And so she is big on the like random surprise. And it's, um, I'm not going to say I'm upset about it because that's, that's pretty, it's like fun to get surprises. So, um, that I think is everything life-wise. We're going to take naps, um, because Annie has been doing a four o'clock thing. She's not sleeping through the night anymore, but I'm not even going to talk about that. Um, so I've been up for a long time. So Jeremy has a rental car that he's going to take back here in just a minute. And then um, I think he's going to take Annie while me and Ainsley nap. Fingers crossed. So that's the plan. But as far as reading goes, I have finished a lot since last time we talked. So I finished I Heart Hawaii by Lindsay Kelk. And I think I pretty much said everything I was thinking about. This one um, was definitely a three star for me. Not my favorite. I wish it kind of would have ended at uh, I Heart Forever because I really like the story when it's set in New York. And in this one, they take a trip to Hawaii and it's... Um, it's our main character, Angela, Jenny, the friend I don't like, Louisa, the friend I do like, and then James or whatever, the actor. Um, if you've read the series, I think you know the whole cast, and it's just kind of a friend group. And um, I really 
like liked seeing them all together, but the setting of Hawaii, it just was like silly hijinks and she was without her family and that kind of stuff. And that was done a little bit weird. And, um, I mentioned in the last book that like I, the one, one of them had the fertility issue and kind of had an uh oh pregnancy and it was the same one, but fertility is talked about a lot in this, but not in enough details to like be harmful. I think I just, I kind of wish authors wouldn't go there if they're going to have a surprise baby. Like I don't know, or it would have been more of a discussion, but that's not why I docked it. I just didn't love um, the time in Hawaii. It, this book strongly, heavily focuses on um, Jenny and her friendship and like kind of the the importance of female friendship, but in a way that like I just don't like Jenny so much, and I think that's kind of a toxic friendship. So I really wanted to hear more about her and her husband and her life in that regard. Um, but are we surprised? No. So that series is done. And like I said, I think I was a little harsher on the series at some points than I needed to be. It is comforting. But truthfully, I like the ones like when she's in New York, just kind of living her life, not the adventures because they get over the top really quick. And Jenny is annoying. So another thing that I was reading that I didn't even tell you guys about was Sisters by Raina Talgemeier. This is a graphic novel um, that it's like a graphic memoir, I would say, about Raina and her sister who is like five or six years younger than her, I think, and just kind of the way they're dynamic and they are taking a road trip from San Francisco where they live to Colorado to see their cousins. And so it's them, their mom, and their little brother, and just their dynamic and kind of um, the sister relationship and how like frustrating it can be, but also like something happens in the end where they kind of have to pull together a little bit. And so they do. And I gave it five stars just because I think I will love anything Raina Talgemeier does. She's awesome. And her art's great. Her stories are sweet. I really, really liked it. So this is the um, sequel to Smile, which is also like about her getting braces and stuff, I think. I can't remember. I've read it, and I know I liked it, um, but this one was really good. Then um, then I picked up I'll Be Home for Christmas by Beverly Jenkins, and this was my first Queen Bev book, and I wish it wasn't because I gave it three stars. I did not love it at all. It is a short novella. I can't remember how many pages it is, but it's a novella. Um, and it's a second chance romance sounded so, 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 so good, but it just wasn't. It's about, um, she is like a Tony winning Broadway star. He is a like world famous chef and they were engaged at one point, but he was a serial cheater. So they broke up and now they're, they both moved, you know, she's in New York, he's in wherever he is. Now they're both coming back home for his sister's wedding because she is still really good friends with his sister. And so they're both coming back for that. And of course it's their second chance romance. Now I love second chance romance, but this book kind of put me in an ex existential crisis about do I actually love second chance romance? Because... I think I need to see some of the before to like fall in love with that. I need like the dual timeline. So I need to see their relationship before so I can like ship them because especially without that in this one, like he's a serial cheater. Don't go back to him. Like, no, no, no. And like, I don't feel like the grovel was enough. And I feel like the flip between like kind of animosity to love was really fast. It was more graphic and more slutty than I prefer. Um, and overall, I just gave it three stars. It had some good elements, but not, not for me. So now I'm reading The Christmas Mystery by James Patterson. And this is like a short book. It's 150 pages or something about some art theft that is happening. And it's a part of a series that follows like a certain investigator. And so it's him and his partner is a female and they are trying to do this together and they've kind of got a romance going on and it's good. It's like, I think if you knew the character, of course, it would be more impactful than it is just jumping in as a novella, but so far so good. Um, I'm kind of thinking like maybe this James Patterson, like detective style that I'm kind of like falling out of taste with that. Um, I used to love like the Alex Cross series and I just don't know if I quite have the, um, if I quite have the interest in it that I used to. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Does that ever happen to you where you're like, I used to love this genre and now I, now I kind of don't? I don't know. Um, it seems to be a good book for what it is. It's short. It's about these, you know, these paintings and it's just, it's pretty focused on that. And 
overall, so, so far, so good. So far, it would be like a three star. I'm not that far from finishing it, so I will probably finish that today, and then I have no idea what I'm picking up. I'm just like mowing through my library books and ro mowing through the challenges for Create Your Own Holiday Adventure. Um, I'll Be Home for Christmas counted for the musical element, because that's a song title. Um, I don't think this Christmas mystery is going to count for anything. Our main character might be over 30. I don't know about that. Um, and then, let's see, what was the other one? Um, I Heart Hawaii is a... I Heart Hawaii is obviously a warm setting. And I think that's it. I think that's it. Oh, and Sisters is um, road trip because they take the road trip. So... Um, that means I have finished my first path and I'm just chugging along. So that is everything. My mother is here, so I will update later. It is um, Thursday and it's almost two o'clock. It's like 1.45 and we are just getting home from today's advent was color a picture for somebody. So Ainsley chose her Nani Nons. Um, Nani is what she calls my sister. And so I Googled um, Nani print coloring page or something and I've never seen the bubble guppies or I don't know anything about that and so I guess there's a character called um, Nani in that and so she got to color a little mermaid and sent it and we just went and put it in her mailbox with a nice note so hopefully that'll be a good surprise for her um, my sister has been the recipient of all like things like that like she one was call somebody and say you love them or just call them and say hi or something and so she chose her her nani for that and then today she chose nani so um that was really fun and this morning we went to my parents house and played outside in their yard for a little bit because it's like nice out 60 something i mean i'm still in like a jacket and stuff but um it's in the 60s and i had a telehealth appointment with my doctor just to talk about some thyroid stuff and so I wanted to be somewhere that like she was contained because it's fenced and there's like lots of different things to explore over there. So we went over there and my appointment of course was like super late and I mean so it goes. That's that's really always the case. But we got to walk around, change of scenery. It was lovely. And then we came home and um, we've had a plumber here all day because we have had quite a few different things going on. I'm sure if you guys have watched the vlogs for a while, you know the whole um, spiel. Like American Home Shield is like a house warranty thing. I won't even get into it, but we had like 17 things break and you have to go through all these hoops. And so finally today, I think we got it all fixed. And so that was good. And then we ate lunch and colored and did our advent and now here we are. So as far as reading goes, I finished The Christmas Mystery by James Patterson last night and I ended up giving it three stars. It was just really short. It was um, just over 100 pages, I think. And so the mystery element was pretty like obvious and I mean, of course, it's 100 pages like in this has its own mystery start to finish like so of course it's going to be pretty like basic there is a relationship between our police um detective and his partner and i like this is number maybe three or something in the series and so james patterson is known for like following a detective and just sticking with him and so i think it would be fun to read more of like i'm almost getting like um naked and death kind of vibes like this this book was at least half romance and half um, mystery and so that part was fun it was just it was just kind of meh I don't know why you guys why I keep picking up uh, short stories and novellas and things because I'm always like man I didn't really care about that like it could have been a full novel or it just was not good but um, yeah so that was that then I picked up paperback crush 
and this is one that I got from the library recently and it was really fun I finished it I gave it three and a half stars it just um, like I, I'm a little younger than some of the books they talked about not a whole lot because they talked about like the babysitters club and stuff that I did read but they also talked about things that were a little bit before my time but really this book is just about the evolution of YA and YA is not a genre it's an age group but like what the trends were for that population from like the invention of YA to not really current day but I mean pretty close to current day and it was really interesting to hear like what was what was trending in publishing at the time and I'm actually I've actually been talking to Brie from Falling for Romance about this all day today because it's really interesting to see where we are now like paperbacks like aren't a thing anymore you know like the babysitters club and stuff was almost like it's not mass market paperbacks but it's almost like that like they just went straight to paperback there wasn't a hardcover option it wasn't like they were very young covers and they, like the covers also evolved over time they weren't the same you know historically but now we look at YA in middle grade and it's a lot of fantasy and these like very um modern kind of adulty covers and I'm not saying adult like um you know it's just they you, they look very hard to tell the difference in a lot of cases and I just wonder like where what happened to the market of um people just looking for like run of the mill follow these girls or this girl and her story and um, like the babysitters club and stuff, but so much of that is being like reprised now that it's like, maybe we don't need new stuff because we've already had really great stuff. And so, um, now just translating it into a 2020 version that is graphic novels and things that are new and will introduce the story to today's kids. So I don't know. Um, my only complaint, like I gave it three and a half stars because it's nothing like groundbreaking. It's just the history of YA and that's interesting to me. Um, but my only other complaint, kind of, and this is like a minor complaint in my opinion. Um, she talked about a lot of the problematic issues of the writing of that time. And she almost did it in a way that was like... Like, I couldn't tell if she was being, like, satirical or if it was her opinion. Um, kind of saying, like, just kind of downplaying it a little bit. Um, the issues that came in those publications, like, I don't know if she was, like, downplaying them or if she was saying, like, the publishers downplayed them or... Um, but I overall, I really liked it. I thought it was really interesting to read about. And it was fun. It was really quick. I read it all last night. So there's also so many books now that I want to go back and read. Because, it, you know me, women's fiction lover. Like, I love just kind of jumping in. Like, The Babysitter's Club. This is why I loved it. Is because... I started reading those around the time that I was the same age as them. And like that entrepreneurial thing is something I could really connect to. And just the whole idea was something I could really get on board with. I swear I have like rabid animals in my back. I don't even know what's going on back there. And I'm we're in our garage. We're safe. We're all buckled in. I'm just going to ride with it. Um, but anyway, so that's what I read. And then now I'm reading two different things. Physically, I'm reading Friday night at... No, uh, Christmas Eve at Friday Night Harbor, I think is what it's called, by Lisa Claypis. This is the first in her Friday Night, Friday Friday Harbor. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Friday Harbor, I think, is the name of the series. Um, this is the first in the series. And I have the second on my shelf. So I got the first from the library, Christmas Eve. This is the perfect time to read it. If I'm going to start the series, now's the time. And I'm loving it so far. It's about this guy who his sister died and left him her baby or her kid. I, she's not a baby. She's a kid. But she, the kid has gone selectively mute since her mother has died. And he's got two other brothers, but everybody's like kind of estranged. Uh, two of them are single. One's in a troubled marriage. They're not close. And so he is actually living with one of his brothers now to help take care of this little girl. And then we've also got this toy store owner. She is um, going to be the love interest, I think. And so she takes a liking to this girl, the little girl, and we'll see how it all plays out. But it's going to be super cute, and I'm, I'm really enjoying it so far. Then on audio, I'm listening to Postscript, which is um, the follow-up to P.S. I Love You. And you guys, I'm just so excited for this. I'm so excited for this. Like, I almost feel like I need to watch the movie or something before I read this just so I can fall back in love with Holly and Jerry, I think was his name. If you haven't heard of P.S. I Love You, um, this it was about a couple who was 30 years old and they... Um, 
he found out he had cancer, and so he left her a letter to open every month in the first year that he was gone. And so, and everyone ended with like, P.S. I love you. And oh, it was just, it's such a good book. And so now we're seeing Holly seven years later. And um, I'm going to stop talking about it because I'm doing a giveaway for it later in the month. So stay tuned for that. Um, and I'm just loving it. I'm, I'm not very far into that either. And so I don't know, like, I can't imagine me not loving it just because I do like P.S. I love you so much. But um, so far so good. It's so far meeting my expectations. So that is everything. I don't think I'm going to finish either of those books today. And, um, because it's Vlogmas and also just because I kind of like it better, I think I'm going to keep continue doing like Monday through Thursday weekly vlogs and then Friday through Sunday weekend vlogs. And so I'm going to end this one here because it's Thursday. I'm not going to read anymore until maybe bedtime. And, Y'all, I'm so tired. Like, I feel like I say that every single time, but I am. And so I can't imagine that I'm going to stay up super late tonight. So that's everything. Um, if you have read any of the things I read in this vlog, let me know. If you have done anything fun for Christmas, let me know. If you've done anything fun, period. Because COVID numbers are out of control here. And so we're like really kind of tightening back up, both as a community and as a family. And so, not that we ever really loosened as a family. We've kind of been sheltered um, for a while. But I think um, fun is, like, harder to come by. So, oh, my high or thing that I love is one that, like, if you YouTube Christmas light shows, there are so many great ones. There's one guy or girl or family or whatever that has um, singing Christmas trees in their window and they do it for Halloween. They do it for everything. If you guys have checked it out, I'm sure you know which house I'm talking about, but we have been every night after bath and stuff, we watch like a two or three minute, um, either song or something while we brush in his hair. And so we've been watching those Christmas light shows and they're so fun, but also the great Christmas light fight, um, is like my favorite show of all time. It, it, I love watching that show. I just am fascinated by these people who spend so much money on Christmas lights and like I love it. So that started last night and we have not watched it. And like, I don't know if you guys have any shows that you like can't wait to watch. And when you like haven't watched it, it's like, ooh, I have that I could do. I have that. And it's like exciting. So um, I don't know when we'll do it. Probably this weekend if at all, you guys, I get, I'm, I'm all talk because we just never, like, life is never calm enough to just sit and watch a show, so, unless the kids are in bed, which then, I mean, they love it too, so, anyway, that is everything. I've said I'm gonna go for, like, minutes, so that's it. Let me know what your high of the week was, and we'll talk to you in the next one.